Hi, and welcome to Control M short video for knowledge article 382207. Best practices for tuning Control M Enterprise Manager. My name is Zev Gross, and I'm the principal technical support analyst at BMC Software. In this video, we will review a list of recommendations for tuning Enterprise Manager for different size of environments. These environments are categorized as small, medium, and large based on the workload. The recommended tuning parameters are documented in KA382207 and are presented in the table format. First, we will cover the format of the table and the objective of this KA. Next, we will discuss scalability and define what constitutes small, medium, and large environments. Then we will review all the configuration parameters and the impact of each one. Finally, in the last slide, we will cover any additional information relevant to this topic. The objective of the information documented in this KA is to provide best practices for tuning control M based on varying workloads to optimize performance. Let's discuss the format of rows first. The first three rows of the table highlighted in green identify the attributes that define different levels of workload. The rows beneath them identify the OS and kernel resources. The remaining rows specify the control M application configuration options and parameter values needed to support the workload handled by control M. Now let's look at the column. The first column defines the parameter name and its configuration file location. Column two through four specify the parameter values based on small, medium, and large environments. Let's delve into the meaning of small, medium, and large. Each environment represents a single installation on one machine. If you have distributed installation, then each enterprise manager installation shall be evaluated based on the workload it is expected to handle. Depending on the objective of each individual EM installation, you can use the criteria in these three green rows to determine whether the environment is categorized as small, medium, or large. Let's review the criteria that influence the level of workload. First, number of active jobs. There is a direct relationship between the number of jobs in the environment and the impact on the system when handling updates and graphical rendering. The more jobs that are in the monitoring domain, the larger the graphical grid that needs to be maintained. Second, number of execution. Each job execution needs to handle anywhere between five to 10 updates. The more executions, the bigger the impact on the system to handle the updates. Third, number of concurrent users. The more users, the more viewpoints to update and render. The more users, the more requests to handle. User requests will touch different aspects of EM, such as add-ons that include forecast, reporting, etc. When referring to the concurrent users, it's referring to all users, such as WLA client, web users, API users, utilities, etc. EM server does not distinguish between any of the users. A request that comes in for an order is handled the same way, no matter what type of a user initiated the request. Majority of our environments will fit in either small, medium, or large configuration. Small environment consists of less than 40,000 jobs in the active. It also consists less than 40,000 executions and up to 20 concurrent users. A medium environment is anywhere between 40K to 300K jobs in the active environment or monitoring, 40K to 30K job executions, and up to 200 concurrent users. And the large environment is anywhere between 300K and 600K jobs in the active environment or the monitoring, 300K to 600 executions, up to 400 concurrent users. The definitions do not impact the machine resources other than the database space. If either user executions or jobs in a category exceed the range specified, 
then use the next higher environment. OS and kernel changes required to support different environments. These three parameters set the limits of a given resource the application can consume. Review the limit command for more details. If you need to change any of these parameters, then you need to restart all the EM components. Setting these limit values need to be done in the startup script, like the .cshrc or .profile or registry. Please ensure that the values are in the range of your soft limits. If not, then hard limits need to be adjusted. Speak to your system admin for assistance. In this slide, we'll talk about the system parameters and Tomcat configuration parameters. Gateway number update threads impacts the handling of updates that arrive from ControlM server. Each ControlM server has its own gateway that processes all the jobs, resources, variables, etc. state changes. The more jobs and executions, the higher the throughput the gateway needs to support. Higher number of threads enable the gateway to process more updates concurrently, resulting in a higher throughput. EM JVM max heap size. This system parameter relates to the Java global condition server process and its value determines the maximum memory size the process can consume. The number of global variables will impact resources this process needs. Now let's look at the Tomcat configuration. The web server not only handles all the browser requests for controlling web, but it also is used as a communication broker to handle communications between components utilizing the library. Max threads determine how many concurrent requests Tomcat can handle. This parameter goes together with max connections. Otherwise, the requests are queued until the connection becomes available. Memory max determines the maximum amount of memory the Tomcat web server can consume. Raising the number of work or threads and connections requires more memory. The last parameter related to the Tomcat indirectly is the thrift library configuration, num workers. Num workers determines the number of thrift threads that manage, manage internal communications between the EM components. Two values are exposed for throttling internal communication. One is with GUI server, and the other is communication with configuration manager server. Now let's look at the rest of the configuration parameters for EM. The parameters on this slide influence the database retrieval functionality of EM. The larger the number of jobs in the folder, the larger the quantity of data is retrieved by EM components and stored in memory. Likewise, utilities used for import and export of folders, jobs, calendars, etc. The more data and the more users that are using the utility, the larger amount of memory is needed to cache the data. Initial memory settings for components that are most impacted are defined in an EM site config.ini. Heap GSR defines the initial Java heap memory used by the GUI server database pool functionality. Heap util defines the initial Java heap memory configured for EM utilities database pool functionality. Heap CMS defines initial Java heap memory used by configuration manager in the database pool functionality. And Heap Gateway defines initial Java, Java heap memory used in the gateway database pool access functionality. Once the initial memory is consumed, the database pool functionality will allocate additional memory by increments as defined by the auto ink heap size parameter. And it will repeat the allocation up to the value defined by auto ink heap times. Pay attention to the total memory you have on the machine as we do not want to try and allocate more memory than what we have on the machine. This slide addresses microservices tuning. First, let's cover control and web. Control App Web Microservice handles most of the application requests that service the web component, such as rendering viewpoint, rendering history view, job definition editing, active job properties, etc. 
Increasing the total memory that this service can consume is critical when you increase the number of users, the number of jobs, and the number of executions. The next microservice is reporting. If reports are run concurrently by different users or reports contain large set of data, you may need to adjust this memory for this microservice independently of the size of your environment. The last microservice in this list is authorization service. The parameter value for microservice is independent of the size of your control M environment. It's more related to the structure and then the complexity of your active directory. The next set of parameters relate to the automation API server. All automation API requests are routed to the REST SRV or to config REST SRV processes. These processes handle application-related and configuration-related requests, respectively. In most cases, each request first logs into the EM environment, and the Automation API user is treated the same as any other EM user. Automation API requests can be more volatile than EM user requests, so it's important to review documentation and best practices for scaling Automation API requests. The link is provided below. This helps minimize the risk of overloading the system and negatively impacting performance for EM users. In summary, when changing parameter for a component, ensure that the component is recycled. Back up the configuration file before making any changes. Ensure there is enough free memory on the system to handle memory-related changes. Test all changes before deploying these to production and refer back to this knowledge article for up-to-date information. Thank you for watching. We would greatly appreciate any feedback you have on this video.